Welcome to the least pre-game conference. I'm going to take you live for the pre-game conference before the puck drops. We're going to least take on the Columbus Blue Jackets in a rematch. Enjoy. Warning to parents, this Paramount Plus exclusive event is not suitable. TJ, how do you shake off the last game from the break leading up to the game tonight? Yeah, I mean, uh, you, know, you, you learn from it and uh, take what you can from it. Um, you know, obviously we had our chances and we didn't capitalize. And you know, at the same time, we didn't manage the puck as well as we wanted to. But, uh, you know, you move on. What does the, what does the addition of someone like Giordano bring to you guys if he does come back into the lineup tonight? Yeah, you know, obviously he brings the experience. Um, you know, he does a little bit of everything out there. He's always looking to jump. He's physical, you know, good defensively, and, you know, he just brings that presence, you know, in the room. Ilya's getting, sorry, go ahead. Just as a teammate and friend, how do you kind of support Ilya as he goes through stress where he's trying to find his game and his confidence? Yeah, I think we, we just have to help him out and, and do whatever we can, um, you know, manage the puck, you know, be in good spots and, you know, try to uh, limit the chances. You were with uh, back with Morgan, but you had that little respite there where you were with Jake. How was the moving around and kind of going back, treating you the last few games or so? Um, not bad. You know, I played with um, Caber last year a little bit, and uh, you know, I played with Mo a lot. So, um, you know, not too much of a transition. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking of that, what, uh, what do you want to clean up from the uh, the game against the Sens? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think, as you guys saw, we came out of the gates flying, so um, there's a lot to build on that, that's positive for sure, and um, I think we key in on that and start the right way and then obviously build on that from, from there on out, and our second was probably our weakest part of that whole game, so find a way to establish, I mean, a good forecheck and, and put a lot of pressure on, on, on the defense tonight in, in their home building and create some turnovers and, and, and play in their zone. So if we do that, we should be fine. In your experience, what's the best way to kind of help support a teammate like Eli when he's trying to find his confidence and going through a tough stretch? It's a team sport and, and we're all in this together. And uh, I mean, obviously he plays the hardest position in, in our game. So um, it's not easy by any means. And, and, and as, as a forward or as a defenseman, what you can do is Clean up some some turnovers, clean up some stuff in your own zone, um, block some shots, and just help him get his get his confidence going. I mean, he's an unbelievable goalie, huge part of our team, great guy, great teammate, and um, he's going to get through it just like everyone else did. And um, looking forward to helping out. What does the addition of someone like Mark Giordano do to a defensive lineup like this? Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, uh, I mean, he's he's a veteran guy that's been around for a long time, so I'm looking forward to getting him back. Third time. What, 16 days you're playing the same team that's yeah. unusual how does that affect the dynamic of the third meeting uh i mean the video sessions aren't quite as long which is which is nice nice and quick meetings uh, i mean you already know what to expect so uh it, it's fun i mean it almost kind of i don't want to say it feels like a playoff series but it doesn't but it's kind of the same sort of vibe you, you start to um you have a real good idea what the other team's trying to do and, and, and their tendencies and whatnot. And obviously, they've got a lot of talent out there uh, on the other squad over there up front, um, a lot of speed. And um, if you kind of feed into that, then then they thrive on it. But if you keep them in their own zone, uh, we can capitalize on that. So um, just focus on that stuff. Really good team, really good test for us tonight. And um, start off this back to back on the right foot forward. What have you seen from uh, Nick? Like he's getting some PP2 reps there with you. Like uh, I know with, you, who, sorry? with Nick Roberts. Oh yeah, yeah. Like what have you seen from his game over the last little bit here? Um, yeah, no, he's uh, he's coming along for sure. Obviously, uh, Yarny and I have played with him for a while, so um, he's he's starting to get more and more comfortable with us, and <clears throat> he's a shooter. So get him the puck in the right spot, and um, he'll capitalize. And obviously, it's doesn't always want to go in, but um, I mean, a guy like that that can shoot like him, uh, he keeps shooting. And eventually, he's going to start going in bunches. Uh, Mark Giordano good to go for today? Yes. What does his addition do in terms of helping with the lineup here? I, you know, I mean, he, we talked about it yesterday. His, his leadership, his experience, I think, uh, 
that that in itself brings a lot to our group. Um, you know, in terms of his game, he's just you know, he's an ultra competitor, so he's going to bring that. Uh, we also think there's some puck moving ability there um, in all three zones that can help us as well. We'll see. We got to get him back into into to game mode here. Um, and like we had said, I, I think that you know Ragason and Benoit and Timmins, these guys have done a good job for us in, in the absence uh, when we've had the injuries. But obviously. You can't replace uh, the type of experience and leadership that, that Gio brings, so nice to have him back. Since coming back from the break, what have you kind of gotten a sense from Eli Samsonov, his mindset and his approach? Well, his, his approach has been been good and similar to what it's been when he's, you know, when he's uh, had to try to find himself earlier. So he's been consistent in that way that he's been able to sort of wash it uh, within a day or two and, and get back to it. Uh, I think the break seems like it's it's helped. Uh, just a few days in a row away from away from the game. I think that, that uh, would help a guy like him. Yeah, and uh, that's it. You know, I mean, I think he's excited to play. He's a competitor. He wants to be in the net. And uh, we got to do a good job in front of him and, and uh, give him every opportunity to succeed and, and find his game. You gave Nick Robertson an opportunity on PP2 in the last game. It looks like it might be the same. What, what did he do to deserve that opportunity? It's really, for me, just, you know, I, we're just trying to get him more touches and, and a little, uh, some more minutes, see if that can help his game offensively. Uh, found that uh, some of his game offensively uh, has has slipped a bit in the last little while, which can happen as you're an offensive guy that that's playing less and isn't touching the puck nearly as much and we haven't practiced all, all, all that much either so all of a sudden your touches really start to go down um, so we're just trying to give him a little bit more opportunity there and see if that might uh, translate over to his five on five game I uh, actually thought his game the other night uh, he and his line I thought were really good for us they couldn't get anything to fall or generate any real high end chances necessarily but they were on the puck and in the offensive zone virtually the entire game so uh, I liked uh, his game the other night, and you know, hope we can continue to build on that. For getting him going, is it his shot or is it? Uh, yeah, just everything. Yeah. You just, you know, a lot of pucks are just kind of slipping off his stick, or you know, f you know, uh, uh, not making plays at the same rate. All you know, all that sort of stuff. So we just, you know, I think it, it happens and when you've got, you know, we've got a lot of guys that need those touches. You know, we've been giving a lot of those to Matthew Nyes um, and. Uh, you know, we also on the second unit power play like to have two defensemen on that as much as we can. Just find that the second unit, generally speaking, is sort of doesn't have as much time. It's kind of a broken unit, and then all of a sudden, if you only have one defenseman out there, it becomes a real challenge. You're almost cutting out five, ten seconds of that power play right away because you're making the change to get your defenseman back out. So having 2D just naturally lets you just go right through it and, and get the full two-minute advantage. Uh, so that in itself is taken away, whether it's been nice or Robertson, takes away from that uh, that time. Because for us, you know, Guard Crack Domi and, and Bertuzzi are staples for there, and, and all those guys play a very important role uh, in that power play. So trying to get the extra minutes there has been a challenge for, for our, especially our younger guys. Uh, last time you guys were in here, uh, obviously, um, the Sean Corrali situation happened uh, with him getting injured. I'm sure that was kind of a confusing thing for you guys on the bench, not knowing what happened. Was it a uh, concern as, as far as you guys were? You know, well, yeah, of course, of course you're concerned because you don't really know what's happening. Um, it didn't seem when he was going off the ice from our perspective that it was uh, anything too serious, but you just never quite know what's happened once he's gotten off the ice. And for the uh, training staff to react the way that they did, uh, uh, you, and you don't know what's happening, you're, of course you're concerned, but uh, uh, we didn't have a whole lot of information, but just trusted that, you know, that they were, he was going to be in good hands and you got to continue on and play and, uh, you know, hopefully uh, we don't have much information here yet still yeah. on our end, but uh, hopefully he's, he's doing all right and it seems like he the, is. Uh, on the hit, uh, the blade of his stick got stuck in the boards and, a button and went under the ribs and stuff like that. He's fine, but... Yeah. It, I mean, it's so rare, right? Like, the, have you ever heard of anything like that happening before? Um, I mean, it, it my, from my perspective, going off, it looked like a player who was winded yeah. uh, and couldn't catch his breath, which is which does happen quite a bit. And 
uh, has happened to me as a player more than I would like it to, and, and it's not a fun feeling. Um, but again, it, you, you, so you didn't think of it as much when he was coming off, but you just you don't know what's happening uh, as he comes off, which I think we've seen enough scary incidents now that they're they're always gonna take a you know react in a out of an abundance of caution in those situations and safety first. And I think uh, the players and everybody, the referees, everyone is is very accommodating and understanding in those situations under uh, you know for obvious reasons. Uh, you mentioned. Sure. 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 Yeah, you've seen this team uh, two times already. I mean, I know it's three real close games. What do you make of this bunch over here? I mean, I know their record's not very good. They got some young players. Whatever. What, what, what do you What do you see when you look across the uh, the ice there? I I see a team that uh, has a ton of skill and uh, speed, ability to move the puck and make plays and score. I mean, you know, that, that's that's the thing. You look at you know, there's some teams that are you know, towards the bottom of the league, uh, around the league. It's not just Columbus, but there's some others, you know, that are some of the best offensive teams in the league at 5-on-5. Five five. And, and Columbus is right there. You know, their production at 5-on-5 five five is, is right near the top of the league. So it shows that they can score and you give them opportunities to, they're going to make it real hard on you. So that's they, right away they get your attention in that area. And, and I think they're growing in terms of, you know, their habits and their structure and their experience. They're getting more experience in the league. But uh, I think there's a lot of young, young players and, and a lot of skill there for, for their team and organization and fans to be excited about. And that's a lot, a lot of reasons why we've got, to, we've got to be at our best. They certainly got our attention when we played them our first night uh, in Toronto. And, and I thought we had a better effort um, and um, we're more, more dialed in on our details. Our special teams are strong in game two. And they're going to have to be more of the same here tonight. You mentioned the, um, the the depth defenseman. Uh, I know they're always going to be fighting for a job, but uh, is Benoit is Benoit making any separation to be the sixth guy? Or is that situational tonight? Or well, he, he's he's really impressed us. I think he's come a long way, and I, I think he's just going to continue to get better. Um, just a he's still a young guy, but has you know has played uh, quite a bit in the league. And his work habits, and his uh, he's he's a very coachable guy. Uh, wants to get better, so I uh, he has really good defensive instincts. He's he's long, closes space, got a good stick, and he's a competitor. Like he's gonna finish every check. He's gonna make it hard on you. Uh, he sticks his nose in and everything. So. He's got lots of reasons for us to really like him and want to continue to work with him. I do think it's a, it's a competition there, you know, for some different guys. And, and we're, we're, we're working through some things with our pairs, too, uh, you know, uh, and the whole lefty-righty situation, how that, how all that comes together for us, too, is something that we're always uh, looking at and discussing on a daily basis. But uh, just... You know the fact that we've kept them in here today versus some of the others who've also done a good job. Legison, you see the other night, and you know he, he's done a really good job for us too. So, uh, and then Timmins, you know, makes plays and, and and helps us on offense and and all of that. And uh, so we've got good options there that we like. I don't think we necessarily had as many options that are coming into the season, but that has come about as uh, the injuries have piled up. You know, it's given more opportunity for, for guys like Benoit to get comfortable here uh, with our team, and and uh, it's done a good job. It's a milestone night for the coach. 300 games. I was informed of that yesterday. Yeah. 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 Can you talk about the journey from uh, that first game to uh, where you are now? Uh, I don't know. It's I. The one thing, if there's one thing I've learned about this league in particular, is you focus on every single day as it comes because they come fast, and and uh, every single game is a difficult one. You have to go about it and prepare about it, uh, prepare for it, just as you would any other. And so, f because of that, you can't really get caught up in in uh, numbers or milestones or records or anything like that because every every day is. Uh, demands your best um, but of course my journey has been uh, like all of ours in the last number of years here uh, in recent years COVID and you know playing with no fans and, and uh, in the bubble and Canadian division like all these things we've been through a lot uh, uh, we've been through a lot through this through this period of time but we're, we're certainly 
Uh, I've enjoyed the last two seasons uh, in particular where we've had some, some normalcy about things.